This is the Adventure Stash with Pace and McKelvin. Quarantine Companion with co-host Justin Williams. Good morning. Yo. What's up? Chilling. Nice. <laughs> Fat and early. <laughs> this is ridiculous, bro. This man ain't here yet, and he gonna <laughs> wake up this early. <laughs> I can't wait to hear y'all talk shit. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm talking hella shit, bro. I got my shoes ready. I got my joke ready. Oh, I'm shit, my shoes. Ready. Time out. I know. That's what I said, because I was like, oh, yeah. I am i didn't put mine on. I just, you know. Ah, coffee. You heard me? You heard me? <laughs> hey dude, I just have my I just have mine ready to show and tell. Oh I, I, shit. I just have mine ready to show and tell because it's fucking morning time and I haven't, I haven't All right, I'm not going to I'm not going to put them on then. I'll just have mine show and tell style also. Yeah. Dude. Dude, finding a good joke is is really hard. It's I know, hard. trust me, it took me like 20 minutes. <laughs> What's up, Bahudi? What up, good man? Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, morning. hey. What up, what up? Thanks for doing this, bright yeah, and early. Man. New hat, bro. It's not early, man. I was about to say, Justin is not, not thrilled with you right now. <laughs> bro, I, I know this you. dude was struggling to get up. Rolled out of bed, I had this all set up so I could just get up. And get the hell out. <laughs> <laughs> you slept in that last night with your headphones on? Everything, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had this shit ready like a pre-breakfast ride. Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for doing this. It's good to kind of meet you finally, sort of unofficially. Yeah. Um, yeah. And thanks for doing it short notice too. Justin, I feel like every day that Justin and I hang out, you come up for some reason or another. So it's pretty <laughs> sweet to, uh, to have this conversation and, Obviously, you guys are going to have a ton of chemistry. Um, I might just kind of get out of the way. Uh, but I have a, a couple things I'd love to touch on, too. And, uh, yeah, we'll just keep it loose. And okay. if there's anything you want to talk about, um, feel free. We're, we have, like, three or four questions we like to hit. But other than that, it's super unscripted. All right. Yeah. I listened to your, uh, your Ted King interview. Also, that was solid. Oh, right on. Thanks. Yeah, yeah that was a little impromptu thing. I ended up running into him uh, at Cabin. and yeah, it just kind of happened. Yeah. Did you yeah. guys race together? Did you guys race on the same team we, ever? Nah, never. Always against each other. Never on the same team. <laughs> uh, when, did you, when did you, like, meet him? Did you guys, like, race nationals or something? Because you guys are around the same age, right? We were around the same age, yeah. But I, I was uh, – he, he blossomed late. You know, I was already like kind of winning and, and doing my thing. And, and he was kind of like this guy who had a little bit of potential, but couldn't really figure it out. And then all of a sudden he got in the right program. You know how that works. You get in the right program and then it allows you to be nurtured and, you know, really show yeah. what you really have. Because when, when we first went up against each other, it was collegiate nationals. And what's funny is I knew he was a strong rider. So I, was, I never told him this, though. I was like, oh, yeah, he's here. I got to watch him. He could, he could play. <laughs> and I just smashed him, you know. <laughs> he told me in, in, in our sit down that he saw me and had the same feeling like, damn, Bahati's here. I don't have a chance. You know what I mean? Uh, so psychologically, it's just crazy how that plays into your mind. Totally. That's funny. I mean, that's yeah. like the mo that's like a crazy important part of racing. I feel like a lot enough people don't pay attention to that. Like everyone's so focused on training, training, training. Mm -hmm. They don't they don't take the time. Like we always talk about tactics, but the other day I was thinking, I was like, man, is it just tactics? It's not only tactics. It's like having that edge mentally over sure. the people that you're racing against and and basically forcing them to to race your race. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's one thing all, you guys have right now. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't you don't hear all these dudes. I'd be like, really, you guys, you already lost, man. Before yeah. you flipped in and went to the start line, you 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 done. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was um, thinking about that the other day. I was like, man, like 
if, if you go on Lost into a race, boss. you should like something that you set out to do. I'm good. Mm-hmm. Well, you got that janky internet, so <laughs> we lost you for a second. Janky internet, bro. I'm working on it. <laughs> Corey just ordered the the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, Justin? I said, um, like, when when I think about, like, how these guys show up to races, right, um, the measure of success should be more about accomplishing something that you set out to accomplish in the race rather than, you know, beating someone like me or Corey if you're not at that level, right? Because mm-hmm. I think that people just judge themselves a bit too harshly sometimes. And me and Corey have been doing this for so long and it's our full-time job. So it's like, sometimes, yeah, like you might get one in on us, but like the reality of it is, if you can go out and accomplish something with this team, with your team um, or on your own, like that could be a top five, that could be making the breakaway, that could be like not breaking in corners, whatever that goal is, you should set those standards rather than being like, I have to win the race so on. Yep. I got most of that, but Justin's internet still sucks. <laughs> um, I'm a failure. I think that's the <laughs> um, see if I can do better. No, one thing I was gonna say about that though is I've heard before people have commented like if I get beat by this person, I know I had a bad race, or if I beat this person, I know I had a good race. And mm-hmm. to me that's so weird because bike racing is like one of the most fluid yeah. kinds of sports there is. Like it it's so uh just every day is different. Um and especially in, in y'all's style of, of racing, it's like the most unpredictable. Super unpredictable, yep. Yeah, <laughs> big time. Um, before we super j- dive in, I got to get my boy Justin paid. So we're going to do a little bit of ad stuff. And I think Rasan might actually be able to jump in on this uh, because our presenting partner is Zwift now, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. For eight weeks, they came on board. Um, super, super stoked on that. And uh, just want to thank them for for coming on board and supporting this show. And um, yeah. I know, Rasan, that you have a – do you still work for Zwift? Is that your, uh, is that your main do. game? Yeah. I do. I'm still there. That's awesome. Um, so I've started using Zwift a lot more during this time. Justin, I'm pretty – are you on Zwift every day, Justin? Almost every day, man. It's yes. At least once a day. <laughs> I'll be doing two a days because I ain't got to bring it up. Did you ever think that you would enjoy riding inside this much in your whole life? I mean, enjoy is, is a very <laughs> strong word, man. Right. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, we have, we have fun with it as a team. Like, we, we make the guys come on and uh, do, like, two, we do, like, two, two rides a week at least, and we schedule three rides a week. So we try to keep it fun, man. Like, I'm always talking uh, to these guys. Corey's always going live with these guys. We're always trying to – make sure that we're like picking at each other and like giving each other shit for like the races and stuff because they're like extremely hard and like i think tyler's the only person that's capable of winning them corey's been close but you gotta just keep it fun man you gotta you gotta interact with your friends the same way you would um if you guys were at a race or whatever mm-hmm. yeah what's it been uh like for you rasan working at zwift you have a pretty sweet title by the way yeah it's a. Uh... It's it's been super busy, of uh, as you may imagine, over the last uh, three to four weeks. Um, and yeah, I, I didn't think it was going to be super interesting to be working at home, but it's a uh, it's it's literally a full time gig, like more full time than been at the office. Dude, uh, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm working like twelve hour days. It's yeah. insane. Yeah, it is. No, no excuses. No <laughs> excuses. No excuses. Plus, uh, my family's home. You know, my wife's here, and and then the kids are here. So that that just creates another dynamic. I really realized how small my house is uh, <laughs> when we're here all day. <laughs> you know. So, uh, but yeah, Z- the the Zwift thing is, is is cool, man. I'm I'm getting hit up like every which way, and it's kind of funny too because, and I don't say this to like down anyone, but it's funny to, to get like emails and calls and LinkedIn's from people who paid you no attention for years that you were trying to, you know, Hey, just kind of knock on their door. And all of a sudden they kind of need you now. It's funny to be in that position. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, Hey man, Hey man, I, I got, I got these burgers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
So what is your, what's your official job description at Zwift? What are you doing there? Uh, so yeah, I left the marketing team about eight months ago and started a new initiative called Social Impact. And it's another way of saying uh, corporate social responsibility. I just kind of hate the way that rolls off the tongue. So came up with something a little fresh um, between the powers that be at Zwift. And yeah, it's been like eight months and uh, my job is, it's a little bit of marketing, but it's, it's more about like just cultivating our immediate community. Zwift sits dead in the heart of downtown Long Beach. Um, I was fortunate enough when I first got hired to do a lot of, um, a lot of fun traveling that, you know, that took me to some places where Zwift did some really cool activations. Um, some of them was on the philanthropy side. Others was just full business. Some of them was commingled, but I just realized that, man, we could be doing so much right here in the hood too. You know, I grew up in Compton and Compton's only four or five miles away from Long Beach. And, you know, we're spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to fly around the world. You know, and this was just playing in my head, like, come on, Zwift, we can do something right here. There's another Justin Williams. Actually, there's someone way faster than Justin Williams right here, and we need to find them. You know what I mean? So, Wait, time out, time out, time out. So you, yeah, I said it. You created your own job title, bro? Sort of, kind of. <laughs> That's confidence right there. You walked up in the building like, hey, I'm going to do, I'm gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Zwift was at the point where they needed to start a, uh, to start giving back. You know what I mean? They they made it to the point yeah. where now they're not just this little company that's making a fun video game for cyclists. You know, it's right. now a bona fide, legit business. And, you know, part of that is, you know, if when you have uh, people like Eric Mann, the CEO, who cares about people, you know what I mean? Is it, and, and like our CEO, David Ritten, he's a great guy as well. It, it just all made sense that Zwift needed to start this sort of campaign and and uh, think about the future too, because I work with kids, right? So if you look at the apples of the world, they got our kids. Mm-hmm. My kids, my my daughter, twelve years old last night is laying on the couch with a laptop, an Apple laptop, her Apple phone, and uh, iPad, iPad all at the same time, and I lost my mind. But she, <laughs> you know, for the rest of her life, she's going to be an Apple user. You know what yeah, I mean? So. Totally. Uh, it's kind of that mindset too, you know, you want to get them young and it's a healthy addiction. Yeah. yeah. Um, cool, I mean, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how healthy uh, Zwift is for your soul, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie, man. I literally be on there confused, bro. I'll be baffled. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. No, it's, it's cool though. Cause I mean, people always say, you know, bikes are for everybody. Uh, bikes should be for everybody. And it seems like Zwift's doing a pretty good job of making Zwift for everybody. Like you've got, super hard races where Justin can go finish 35th or you've got group rides um, where it's just, you know, chatting and, and mingling. So um, I think they're doing, doing good stuff over there. Um, it's pretty, pretty cool. Um, other sponsor. We have a second one just quickly. This one is near and dear to Justin's heart spot life by spot. Um, they just came on board. Uh, I'm going to have you talk about spot in just a second, Justin, but um Quick shout out to them. If you guys log on and get yourself a policy for 25 bucks a month, you get $20,000 of coverage if you get injured, no matter what. It doesn't really matter that we're all stuck here at home right now because most people honestly get hurt in the home, maybe especially when you're on Zwift. Just kidding. I've never heard of that happening yet. um, (laughs) I've fallen off. Could happen. Could happen. But one thing that's super cool that that uh, spot's going to do is is uh, if you use the code Payson, which honestly the code should be Payson and Justin, we'll fix that. Um, <laughs> they'll donate they'll donate proceeds to World Bicycle Relief, who's uh, working really hard to get bikes um, into the hands of first responders in some of the most vulnerable parts of the world, um, trying to trying to help this COVID nineteen pandemic. So um, Spot will send dollars directly back to to World Bicycle Relief if you go sign up uh, with code Payson. Um, Justin, when did you sign on with Spot? That was pretty recent, right? Yeah, I just got on with them, actually. They, they uh, It's been one of my dreams to get, like, like some kind of coverage for a team, right? And then starting a team, um, you know, when they came along, I got referred, actually, um, by a friend. Um, and when, when they came on, it was like this dream come true because, you know, we race Criteriums. It's, like, really one of the most dangerous um, – it, it can be really dangerous. Um, so in having that, you, we could just go out there and not have to think about kind of what what the what ifs, um, mm-hmm. and we can go out there and race our best race. So 
uh, it's it's been amazing to have them come on board. Um, they're they're an American company. They just got coverage in California, so uh, we're all for it, man. We can't wait to go <laughs> go throw some elbows <laughs> without any worries. Yeah, totally. All right, uh, enough of the formalities. What should we start with, Justin? <laughs> Dude, okay. do we need do we need to do an intro for this guy or anything? Do we need to let the people know all, all the <laughs> like all who the is sh- this dude? All, all, all the shit he's on, or does he need no intro? I mean, that mug you're drinking out of makes me think you don't need an intro. That mug yeah, is that, like holy that's, shit, dude. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a LAP. <laughs> oh, oh, that is <laughs> sick. You, that you is, completely <laughs> lost me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the popo mug, man. I thought I thought that was a Black Panther mug. You got all the right colors. You tricked me, bro. Uh, my uh, my my good friend, you know Cedric. He's a he's a homicide detective. And, yeah, and he brought me this as a little gift the other day. So that's you know, I use all gifts. I, I feel like Rasan doesn't need an intro, but I feel like he he does at the same time. He he never talks about himself, and I always get on his case about this. But he's like multi-time national champion, U.S. pro champion. We actually won multi-time, dude. You need both hands. <laughs> multi-time. How many he's, do you have, Justin? I have eleven on the what? track and on the road. Yeah, to find that eleventh one, man. <laughs> Rasan's like <laughs> come back 2.0. Yeah, I mean, actually, I, I was for this really? season. Yeah, I was gonna go to Masters. Yeah, uh, dude, I keep I keep telling this dude. I'm like, yeah. dude, like they all count them all, man. Cor- Corinne has like what 72 or something, and she's counting she like count. collegiate. She counted like backflip national champion. She counts like <laughs> <laughs> she counts like everything. But I digress. Rasan is is amazing rider. Uh, I grew up racing with him. He kind of brought me up. Um, taught me everything that I know. Uh, he won a ton of uh, national championship, a ton of races, uh, biggest races in America. Um, he's also, uh, to people, most people, uh, you know, they don't know this, but he's won a lot of road national championships, uh, done, gone to the, the junior world championships for the road, raced a lot in Europe, um, has this amazing, he's this amazing well of knowledge. Um, and like I said, he doesn't talk about it enough. So t- today we're going to pull it out of him. Son. <laughs> today we go, we're going to pull it out of him. Cause my first, the first question that I actually had lined up was when you were junior, you won the road race. Uh, was it junior or under 23 when you won the rate, the road race solo? Uh, that was 17, 18 junior. So my last year as a junior. Mm-mm. Yeah. Mm-mm. Uh, uh, so, on, a, on a course, <laughs> no one said I would finish. <laughs> Oh yeah, nice. my own teammates. Day, yeah. hey, hey, that sound that sound just like cycling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so my my first question was like, when you won that national championship, like, what was the thought process in where you were gonna go next? Like, what was the next steps for you after when you're like road race national champion, one solo, you have junior worlds coming up. And then after that, you're going under 23. I don't, I'm not sure if there was under 23 programs at that yeah, point. Yeah, it but was. <clears throat> what was the next step? Well, that year was interesting because um, from my household, from a household point of view, my dad, you know, I had a partial scholarship to go to college, right, at Loyola Marymount. And I didn't want to go. I wanted to race bikes. <laughs> and um, the, Sorry, the scholarship was for an, an academic uh, scholarship? or Yeah, at Loyola Marymount right here in uh, California. And uh, I didn't want to go. And so my, my dad basically was like, all right, well, you got to do something. And I was like, well, I want to race bikes. So I really want to do. And uh, it was pretty much the first time, honestly, that I wrote uh, cycling goals down um, to point them out and try to achieve them. Um, so that's, that was one part of it. And then the second part was that, man, my, my, my graduating class of 17, 18 cyclists was stacked. You know, it was the Danny Pates, the Mike Freeman's, uh, Damn, yours the Mike Creed's, the, uh, Patrick McCartney. Uh, I mean, it was so many dudes. Uh, mountain bike. What was the mountain bike dude? I, I believe he was a he was a Red Bull athlete for a while. Little guy. I forget his name now. Out of Colorado. Anyway, so many good riders, right? And uh, the USA Cycling basically said, "If you win, you're in." So you win road nationals, you're going to worlds. Um, but there was also like this little caveat, like, but for the ones who are absolutely smashing it through the year, you will also go. Like, so say for instance, you won like 10 big races throughout the year and you kind of flustered in, in the road nationals, you will still go. 
So I was smashing it the entire year. And so when the road, road race came, um, <laughs> I was like, man, this really ain't for me. You know, it was just fun. <laughs> in the hills of Pennsylvania. But what, what got me all hyped was that just like even my own teammates, like I was saying, was like, yeah, Bahati, you just go on an early attack because, yeah, this course is too hard and blah, blah, blah. Dude, mm-hmm. we went out and rode it the day before. And I was like, I could, I think I could do this. <laughs> it's hard. I know it's going to be hard, but I think I can do it. And, uh, yeah, I went out there just kind of psyched up um, in someone else's shorts because I left the hotel without my bib shorts. Ner- nervous. Yeah. Nervous wreck. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it just uh, – I was aggressive. It, it played into my favor. I was in a group of, you know, like eight hitters. Will Frischkorn was another guy, you know, oh. who was in my group. Uh, Dustin Rademacher, yeah, pro- you guys probably don't remember him. But, uh, yeah, I got into that group with these guys, and they were hitting each other. And, and I was just kind of like this afterthought behind them. Like, ah, Bahati made it. All right, whatever. And on the, on the last two laps <laughs> – He ain't going to be here for long. Other. Nope. <laughs> And I was I was that guy that just kind of waited, 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 and then after that last attack, I think by uh, by Patrick McCarthy, he was such a strong rider. He's now the DS for Rally uh, Cycling. Uh, when they when they brought him back, I just kind of rolled off the front and won solo by like over two minutes. Holy oh, shit! Yeah. <laughs> Whoa! And it was like automatic, He's... and then the next day was the crit, and I. I think my confidence was so high then that Sterling McNeil <laughs> was my lead out guy that, that day. And yeah, I won the crit. So like going back to back was kind of cool. You, so you <laughs> felt like you had more confidence in winning the crit. Cause when I won the road race, same kind of story. Like it was like this roly punchy course. Right. And I was an afterthought and it was together after the last climb. And I was, I just thought to myself, like, if I'm ever going to win road Nash, you know, it's going to be like right now. And yeah. I was just like, whatever it takes kind of thing. So in saying that, like, I, I totally get that. Like, they were like, by the time they realized I was still there, it was too late. But and I think, too, like, when I went off the front, they probably thought not in 100 years can he sustain it. <laughs> right? Like, Solo, really? Really, yeah. Sprinter? Solo? Yeah, right. Bahati, <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll give him 30. You know? <laughs> and I was on one. You know, it was just one of those days. Like, yeah. I tell people all the time, like, you – you don't get those days often where you're just on one, like nothing hurts. Everything's come easy. That was just that day for turn over. Yeah, yeah, you got to take just turn over. Yeah, I was say, I was saying when I went into the crit, I was like so nervous. I, I didn't think I was going to win the crit. I was like, I'm really about to be road race national champion <laughs> and not, and not win the crit. And it was like, it like scared the, sh- it like scared me. Cause I was like, Oh man, like people are going to be like, you won the road race, but you couldn't win the crit, really? It's supposed to be an automatic. So yeah. it's funny that you say you have more confidence going into the – into the Like, into back the to what we were saying, I don't know if it was uh, uh, being recorded or not, but, like, cycling is so unpredictable, you know? Mm-hmm. It, that could have very well happened. You could have been road race champion, and Saturday for the crit, the legs were just exhausted. You were mentally exhausted, and then that was it, you know? For yeah, sure. Pretty, it was pretty ridiculous. So I want to rewind super quick and uh, get a little bit of the backstory of how you mentioned you, you grew up in Compton. Um, how did you end up in cycling? Because that doesn't seem like a very typical trajectory. Yeah. Um, I'm curious what that path looked like for you. I mean, we don't have to go super biographical, but it would be cool to set a little bit of groundwork. Yeah. So the backstory, um, born and raised in Compton uh, for – the first half of my uh, childhood years. Uh, <laughs> Next week. Nice. <laughs> um, and uh, I found the sport of cycling through my sixth grade teacher, basically, you know, uh, long story short, just being a typical, you know, kind of running wild sixth grader and uh, got in a little bit of trouble. And uh, he, he saw the good in me, you know, uh, the, the trouble that I was getting in, he could have very well sent me to the office, got me suspended the whole nine yards. But instead, he took a liking to me, um, introduced the sport of bikes to, to myself and my parents. And uh, I thought bikes was motorcycles. So I was, <laughs> I was You all, thought? <laughs> I was all gassed up about it. I was like, oh, I can go race motorcycles at Cal State Dominguez Hill? I'm in. <laughs> um, so if you've been to the velodrome pace in, uh, in Carson, you yeah. know what it looks like now. Well, back in the day, you're talking like early 90s, 
that was all like agriculture. The only thing was there was the old velodrome, the, the outdoor 333 where they had the Olympics. Um, outside of that, it was just like uh, sugarcane farms and strawberry patches and stuff like that. So uh, what up, man? Yo. <laughs> so yeah, man, I went up there, thought I was going to be seeing like a motorized motorcycle and I saw track cycling and uh, yeah, it wasn't cool. He was like, hey, he was like, hey, t- take me home. He was like, immediately, like, take me home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, part of it was punishment. My dad saw the fear in my eye, like, dude. And I, re- I remember, like, it was yesterday. I was like, dude, I don't want to do a bunch of white dudes and tights and look, what's up with them shoes, man? Like, them shoes. And, why does helmet look like that, you know? Um, I was kind of forced to try it and I ended up enjoying the company there. Because a lot of the program was had like a lot of foster kids and kids that just needed some love and they were fun. Um, and it was a mixed pot, too. You know, people like Sarah Hammer was already training there. So we would see like these really fast 13, 14 year old kids. And here we are kind of just working our way in. It's like, oh, I want to be that fast. And next thing you know, you're that fast. And then you're at a question. Hour. A question. How long did uh, Sarah bust your ass before you start? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. We're the we're the same exact age, so probably up to about fifteen, sixteen. Damn. Yeah, I, See, I had this. Up. <laughs> there's there's so many similarities. There was a girl, uh, Kathleen Fiedler, that was mm-hmm. I sort of Encino, uh, and she was out there. She would literally bust my ass till I was like fifteen, bro. I was like, yeah. this is. I'm glad there's nobody here. <laughs> nah, we had some killers back in the day, man. We, yeah, we had some killers. I think it was a little different attitude back then, too. But yeah, yeah. So maybe the most important question of this whole <clears throat> podcast: Justin keeps comparing himself to you. Peak Justin, <clears throat> peak Rasan. Oh, why no, you gonna start this? No, <laughs> no, no lead out trains. Two hundred meters. To fight. I'm, I'm no, gonna go get Alex Wild for your ass. Keep playing with me. <laughs> no, no wind. Who wins? What 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 type of sprint? Out of a corner, drag race. Drag is, race. Is it a two fifty or a three hundred we'll, meter sprint? We'll we'll say we'll say drag race and then we'll say uh like Giro weird finish, like twisty carnage. I don't know. Hard, Justin man. got a big old <laughs> Justin got a big old booty, so he might <laughs> he might get me in a drag race. Um, I was and, I was gonna say that, yeah. And I, I was never actually a fan of the drag race. Um those long sprints, I, I hated them because guys like Chris Horner could get in there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like Chris can't yeah. sprint, but he's strong and he can hold like a thousand watts or nine hundred watts for like two minutes, ten, ten minutes, <laughs> yeah, and, just be, and just be in the way and end up getting like third. You know, and yeah. he's got like all these other strong dudes behind him, and the sprinters are just so I I never liked that because it didn't take a lot of skill, right? It just mm-hmm. took like just power. Um, so. I'm, I was more of the Giro finish, kind of like crazy, uh, you know, using your bike handling skills. Uh, yeah. Win, so. I, would, I would say we have, like, very similar styles, but also very different. Like, I'll, like, bully my way through the field, and, like, Rasan's more, like, finesse. Like, Rasan will know where to be, mm-hmm. know how to close doors, and, and that'll be, like, why he wins. And I would just, like, ride through people. Like, I still have the thought process going on, but, like, my go-to is, like, I'm going to ride through you, and then, like, we'll see how things end up. And Rasan's like, oh, yeah, like, he's beat me before because he just knew exactly where to be and what to do, and it was all, like, a mental game. So I think it, it, it just it comes down to, like, how tired am I? Because <laughs> <laughs> if, if I'm not thinking, man, like, he's just going to, like, put me in a box or something. Like, he did a video the other day where he's just explaining, like, all right, look, it, we're about the same speed at this point uh, in our racing, um, but I'm going to push him to the left. And, like, I went left, and it was just like Corey was coming backwards so goddamn fast. Like, I couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm, like, super mad after the finish. I'm like, ah! I, I lost. <laughs> he's, he's, he's still <laughs> mad. That was, that was, like, five years ago, man. <laughs> For real. I'm like, watch when I catch him. Watch when I catch him. Yeah, but it's funny because when I, I don't – I was just blessed with it, man. And I don't know if it's the coaches I had back in the day or what, but I could kind of, I could see what's going to happen before it happens. And I use it to my advantage. Like in my head, that video that Justin's talking about, like no matter who you are, if Justin's on your will, I don't care if it was 10 years ago or today, you're going to be, you got to be concerned, right? Like, all right, fast dude on my will. 
well, all right, he's going to come around me. I'm basically his lead out guy now. So in my head, I was like, as it happens, you got to think so fast, right? So here we are coming out of the last corner of a crit going like 38 miles an hour. And instinctively, I said, I'm going to pretend to go left. He's going to follow me. Then I'm going to shoot right. And sure enough, I went left, shot right, and he was stuck. Like, couldn't go anywhere. And that was part of the reason I won, 100%. I'm not afraid to say it. I don't know if we had to go head up if I would have won or not. So um, those traits I've had throughout my entire uh, racing career. And so people are just like, what just happened? (laughs) 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 Like... Wasn't I just fighting you for a will and you get, you let me beat you or see a lot of times I, I do this too. We'll be fighting and I'll pretend to like really fight you, but I'm not really fighting you. And I'll be like, Oh, okay. You got me. And then two turns later, I'm underneath you because you thought mentally, mm. I just bullied this guy. He's out of the way. And then all Damn. of a sudden here I come boom and scared the hell out of you. And now yeah. you're freaked out. And you just went from like fifth wheel to 20th wheel because number one, you got dive bomb and you got freaked out. So mm-hmm. stuff like that, I try to do uh, just more on a low keto and not too aggressively. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So when did y'all get linked up? Like when, when did, when would you say uh, you first noticed Justin and, and decided that, you know, he was worth some of your time maybe? Well, I grew up. <laughs> Damn. <racing. Yeah. laughs> And I grew up racing against his dad when I was a cat three. So I was a cat three at like 15 and his dad, you know, I don't, you probably know this pace of, but Justin's dad is like the prime minister of Belize and California. <laughs> yeah. So around here, he was the man, right? He was a cat three. He probably should have been a cat two, but no one forced him to move up. <laughs> And yeah, four kids, I, man. <laughs> yeah. Here I am, like, 15. I'm Now we're friends, but now I'm starting to beat them as a 15-year-old. Maybe that friendship was starting to get a little rocky. Um, and then Justin was kind of coming up. He's like, you know? actually, I don't like this dude. <laughs> yeah. So it wasn't until, I don't know, maybe uh, you were on major motion where things got mm-hmm. a little serious between Justin and, and myself, and we started riding together and, um, when I had the opportunity to put him on rock racing, that's when, like, I mean, we already had a friendship, but that's when, like, the the, the friendship of racing together and being friends kind of blossomed. When yeah, we were he on. didn't even give me a choice to go on rock racing. Like, <laughs> he was like, hey, are we starting this team? And I was like, all right, cool. Let me talk to Dave. He's like, no. <laughs> 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 you're on the team. And I was like, all right. <laughs> like, dude, you're, you're not making a paycheck. You're going to get a paycheck now. <laughs> <laughs> like, Stop talking. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of rock uh, so, racing, what's uh? Do you have a best cheapo story from when he was on that team? That dude is nuts, man. Uh, so many. I think the one that probably a lot of people won't like, but it made me realize that he truly is crazy, is uh, <laughs> when he was in California when we had our camp. Um, and this is the third year, maybe. What year was that? We had the two houses in Malibu. I think it was. I think. Mm, I think it was the third year. Cause that, yeah, that was the third year. That's that when like, we stuff had, like, started, started to really fall apart, right? Now mm-hmm. it's this this like uh, division thing where, all right, these guys are on the house on the hill. Really nice. Private, house, chef, house, private chef. Private chef. But these guys are a house on the bluff in Malibu. Like you walk outside the back door and you're on the ocean. So really nice homes, both of them, whatever. But so it was separated and you know, the, the European guys were over here and the American guys were over there. And uh, this fool, Chippo, shows up and we had a lot of female, as we do in America, we have a lot of female swanures, right? We go, no, no, no ladies around the boys. Women only good for... Whoa. <laughs> Jesus I got Christ. three daughters, man. I'll you up, man. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> And that's when I was like, I ain't messing with this dude. Like, I used to look up to you, man. You know, I yeah. want to be just yeah. like you. I, I, ain't messing. I literally lost a lot of respect for him right there. Yeah, yeah I, I was tripping on him when, when we had done. I would have been suffering all camp. And he came in like halfway through camp. And yeah. uh, and then we we're like two or three hours into a ride. He like jumped out the van. And like Michael was like, hey, meet your new teammate. And I was like, boy, I'm cross-sided right now. I don't even know what's <laughs> going on. What, what are you talking about? Yeah, and then he jumped out and rode, just like jumped out and rode. I think he didn't even finish the ride, did he? 
Nah, the, the dude is just like, he's definitely full of himself. He was definitely a good bike racer, so you can't take that away from him. Uh, he definitely changed the game with like bringing his own style, so you can't take that away from him, right? But I don't know if he's a good human being, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> At yeah, the end yeah. of the day, yeah, like yeah. He, he definitely contributed to the sport of cycling, so we'll give him that. But outside of that, man, uh, you know, I don't really have anything else to say about him. Yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel yeah. you. All right, let's <laughs> lighten the mood. Joke time. Justin. Oh, here we go. I didn't even think of one. Uh-oh. That's, that, that's all right. Justin can, Justin can have, cover for you. We're going to have to keep this to like one joke per episode, bro, because this already, I was like looking up jokes. I was like, damn, this is about to be whack. <laughs> I'm about to say something real whack. All right, here's my joke, right? Uh, two goldfish are in the tank. One looks over at the other one and says, you know how to drive this thing? Get it? Because it's a tank. Justin, that's so bad, dude. Horrible. That's so bad. I'm, mine may be worse, though. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Let me hear it. Uh, what do you call it? What do you call a, um, a alligator with a vest on? Go ahead. Uh, investigator. Oi. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, this is terrible, bro. <laughs> Guys, I said lighten the mood. Shit. Yo, Kevin Hart and, and Dave Chappelle would be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have, man. Uh, all right. We'll we'll call it we'll call it good. We'll call it good. That was a formality we had. Alright, what do you what do you way. call the bike? What do you call the bike with two flat tires? T- uh wait. <laughs> I don't know. Dead tired. Hey, what? <laughs> <laughs> Dead tired. <laughs> That's terrible. That terrible. was that was so bad because it was a bike joke coming from a cyclist, <laughs> and I'd it was bad. I'd it say was double let, bad. <laughs> I'd say let's stop while we're ahead, but we never got ahead, so we're just gonna stop. <laughs> oh, funny. Oh wait, oh while God. we're while we're talking about, let's go. Let's. There are so many great memories from rock racing. So one of the questions I have for for Ra is like, what was one of your favorite uh, memories from rock racing in those first two years, where it was just like, because the first year was like a, it was strictly a California team, right? Mm-hmm. For the most part, every, we went to like Arizona. I mean, we we did a little bit of traveling that first year. I, I'm just talking about the riders. Like it was mostly oh Cali yeah, yeah riders yeah. all Cali so, yeah. Yeah, so in those first two years, like, what was the best memories uh, from the team um, that you had? Uh, probably our, our first road trip to Valley of the Sun, mm-hmm. um, because Kale showed up in his own Cadillac, right? Damn. You remember that? Like, we had Damn. Cadillac as a sponsor, and Kale showed up in his own Cadillac with, like, 24-inch wheels. We're like, who is this dude? <laughs> like, Must have... We're just Yo, happy to be in a Cadillac, and you show up in your own. Um <laughs> And then, oh, uh, and then we went out there and we won. So that 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 was a uh, that was memorable. But um, I tell people all the time that the CSC Invitational was Dang. probably the highlight of all of rock racing. Even it supersedes the national championship that I won the following year. That that race for so many reasons was big. One, we were still like the bad news bears, right? Two, we didn't have skin suits. Uh, a lot of people don't. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, Payson, if you look at my the picture I have for my my Zoom uh, photo is actually from the CSC Invitational. So, quick backstory: we're at the hotel. All the teams stayed at one hotel, and so JJ Hiato from CSC, like he brought his whole team from Europe. Navigators was there. Hilton Clark was their sprinter. Um, Toyota United, right? We had they had all all these huge teams and. Uh, and, and uh, what's his name? Hilton Clark goes, I right, mate. Can't win. You won't win today. I was like, why you say I won't win? Like straight to my face. He's like, ah, you don't have a skin suit on. <laughs> All right, this race, 100 kilometers, mate. Got to have a skin suit. Got to have a skin suit. And I was like, it's All something right. like five. It's like something like 500 turns, right? Like, because this race is ridiculous. It's in the middle yeah. of the summer in Alexandria, Virginia. It's like 105 degrees, 100 percent humidity. 200 riders start, 35 finish. And it's, it's been like that for years. And uh, that, that, so we, we get to the race, the race is gone, and you're just turning and turning and racing and turning. It is so hard. And Kale Leo Grande, we were the last two standing for, from a team. Oh, well, let me go back because this is a very funny part. 
we had we, we had a bus by that point. I oh, here we here we go. <laughs> so by this time, I kind of made a little name for myself because I was winning, and I was on this magazine cover. And so people, especially like in the DC area, there's a lot of black people that follow cycling, and they were just happy to see Justin and I. And so they wanted my autograph, but I was running late because I had like these interviews leading up to the race. So as I get on the bus to try to put my number on, this guy stopped me. He's like, please, please, autograph, autograph. And I was like, all right, just give me five minutes. I'll put my number on. I'm going to come back out. As I'm walking up the bus stairs, Justin's getting ready to walk out. I said, Justin, see that guy out there? Take a picture and sign it and sign my name for me. <laughs> I'm talking about seconds, not even minutes. Justin walks out. The dude's like, hey, hey, hey. Justin signs my autograph on a photo of me, and the guy is happy. And, you know. I go out and, and win the race. But I'm the, like, little chocolate rocket. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that is tr- like the most true teamwork I've ever heard of. That's like lead, leading your boy out like way, way early. Way I'm early. like, I got you, boss. <laughs> but that's, that's not the first time. And I'll tell you another story. But let me just finish the CSC. So with like five laps ago, Kale was uh, – this is the way Kale talks. Hey, hey, bro, how you feeling? You feel good? I was like, yeah, I'm straight. He's like, oh, because me? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that means he's that means he's real good legs are dropping lightly right so he's like oh yeah yeah so i'm like all right whatever i'll leave kel out i'm cramping at this point anyway and um uh i'm leading kel out with kind of like two to go and then one to go i'm doing this full kind of full gas kamikaze just just up the right hand side and i look back and kel's not there but i'm in position i'm coming around the last corner and this is a drag though this is it's a like an off camber 180, and it's yep. like a good 400 meters to the finish uphill. And I'm cramping, dude. I've never cramped in my arms before. I'm like sprinting. I'm like, oh, oh. And then as as the sprint gets shorter, I actually got faster, and I was boxed in. There's a, a couple pictures I can share with you. I'm boxed in between uh, Ivan Stevich and and uh, Hilton Clark, and they opened this door, and I got through. And if you look at my photo, my mouth, I'm crusty, and I'm doing this. I'm pumping my hands, and I'm saying, no skin suit. That's all I can say. That's all I can say. Like, no skin suit. Right? And, yeah, so that was, a, that, was a huge, that was a huge win for us. No skin suit. I'm taking that. I'm yeah, taking yeah. that celebration. And then he had to sit on the podium with me after I did that. Hey, hey you ever feel somebody just looking at the side of your face? <laughs> Um, I'm going to tell you what, one more quick story to get back on topic. Uh, the same thing happened with Justin. Uh, I was like 0 for 8 at the Athens Twilight. Never really cracked the top Yo, 10. And I always told ever. myself <laughs> that if I won this race, because it's such a crapshoot, I said, if I ever win this race, I'm never coming back. And sure enough, I won it, right? And there's so many people there. I'm doing a, my cool down lap, high five, and crowd's going crazy. When I come back around, the announcer – is interviewing Justin, but they think it's me. Literally, hey, like, we're yo. still in the 2008 Athens Twilight Champion. How do you feel? And Justin's like, oh, I feel great, man. It's I was like, it was easy. I was like, it was easy, bro. Was My like- boys is out here. Teammates is out here, you know. I came out here to win. You know, we got it done. <laughs> bro, I I'm spent like- two laps celebrating, slapping hat. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> you get a high five. You get a high five. I was like, wow. We do not look the same. Like <laughs> people are asking me for my bottle. Hey man, can I get this bottle? I said, all right, girl, you can get this bottle. Can I get a hug? I trade yep. you. <laughs> yep. That's a real story, man. It really happened. So that's yeah. insane, dude. I uh, got like t- I don't even think I finished, bro. I got like oh, you 20. I, I, <laughs> yeah, like he was out of the race, like coolly cooled down and like clean already, but he still mm-hmm. had his kid on. Mm-hmm. Dude, you know, I come back around. I'm sweaty, and crusty. I was on my Dave Chappelle, bro. I was like, "It's a celebration." <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to think of that, man. That is like, I don't know if that's like the ultimate wingman move or just the ultimate backstab move, <laughs> bro. I'm just trying to make his life easy. You know what I mean? I'm trying to get him to the celebration. You know what I mean? It's not about doing all these interviews and stuff. He already won. 
It's, 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 it's also we need more black people in bike racing. We all, <laughs> if it's only two and, and they think we're we're both of the same, you know, we got to do a better job. That's for that, damn when, sure. When when I was <laughs> when I was young, I was really skinny, so I me and Rasan like physically looked more alike when I was younger. So like mm-hmm. I think that probably that probably played into it. Yeah. <laughs> and Actually, then we went and won nationals the same year. So then we were both in the jersey. <laughs> quick True. quick segue there. Um, I've talked to Justin a good amount about this, but I'd like to hear your take. What do you think uh, are some of the keys to getting more representation um, in the sport? Is it just guys like you, guys and gals like you, or, you know, ladies like Aisha leading the way and and proving that it's possible? Or or what do you think uh, some of the main main things are here? I think that helps. But if you look at it from that standpoint or that point of view, it's going to take months I mean, sorry, it's going to take years, right? Um, it's it's kind of sad that you could look at <clears throat> from Major Taylor, after Major Taylor, it was Nelson. After Nelson, it was me, you know, but there was a couple in the middle, like Eric Saunders, but he never, re- you know, it never really made a name for himself, even though he was a really good bike racer. People probably don't know who he is. Um, and then I kind of came along. And then it's Justin, but it's like these – these increments of like three decades almost you know it's getting a little shorter because it was 10 decades ago that i was where justin is now so okay now he's there but is it going to take another 10 years to to be to find another justin or aisha so we definitely help and we definitely influence someone but it's it's not it's not going to be on a grander scale where you can have this influence like a Michael Jordan would have on like the entire world. So how do you get to that point? And I think that's bigger than what Justin, Aisha or anyone else can do on their own right now, unless Rupert Murdoch is like, Hey, I got, I got 5 billion for you. Go change the world with cycling. Literally what you need. Right. Um, So it's hard, man. I think uh, it, you know, you look at places like I'm doing something with Israel Cycling Academy where Zwift is in their school now, right? It's literally a class where they have 15 stations set up and when you go to – so stuff like that has to happen. It has to start in the school system, uh, and then that trickles up to, you know, and mushrooms into something much bigger. But I, would, I wouldn't discourage uh, – if people are inspired by Justin or Aisha or myself, whoever it may be to do the same things that we're doing to try to make it grow. But man, it's going to take, it's going to take an army to really have a meaningful impact on people outside of our immediate community. So stay encouraged, keep doing it. But man, we need USA cycling to change. We need the UCI to change. We need, um, you know, even if just looking at my own story on when I was on Jonathan Vodder's team and how I was treated, you know what I mean? Like those people have to change their mindset of what they think of people like myself. And I'll, I, 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 I tell this to people all the time, five years ago, uh, maybe even longer than that, Justin, when I coached you, when I was your DS, when you won your first championship yeah. in Anaheim, that's a fantastic I, story. I said, this dude just won a national championship against people who, geographically geographically live in places much better than him not status wise just geographically they could leave their doorstep and they're in the hills of utah colorado um you know they're in wyoming or wherever it may be justin is stepping over shell casings and having to uh navigate traffic for an hour and a half just to get to the coast yet he just beat you that says something so you know I don't want to just beat that, but uh, yeah, it's going to take a lot of help, man. I think it starts from the top. If the UCI can buy in, I know they're doing a better job with getting people from smaller nations over to the UCI center in Switzerland and stuff like that, but it's got to be much bigger than that. It's got to be like systematic uh, movement to really help inner city youth from all parts of the world get, get into cycling. I agree. hundred percent. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, <clears throat> All right. Well, actually, quickly follow up. Do you want to talk about your Bahati Foundation real quick? Yeah, we'd love to, man. Um, We're actually celebrating. It's a great question. (laughs) We're celebrating 10 years this year. It was uh, 10 years ago, March, uh, that it was launched. Uh, I'm not sure, Justin, if you were there or not, but we did a big 
big launch at the uh, LA Live down in downtown yeah. LA. That was a that was a big deal. Uh, I never forget it. It was a, it was a, a moment in my life that I'll never forget. Um, but yeah, we we're continue plugging along. You know, uh, our mission is to inspire youth through uh, education, music, and sports. Uh, three things that are super important to just survival, right? Um, we all understand that cycling is not for everyone. Um, you know, going to college is not for everyone, but you can still be educated and you can never uh, take that away from anyone. So uh, music is important to me because the first thing I learned to do was play saxophone. My dad was a musician. So at five years old, I was learning how to play scales and chromatic scales and stuff like that. And then as I grew up and got to high school, I always wanted to play drums. And I paid attention to drums so much that when I auditioned for the drum line, literally went out and it was all right, do this. I, do this. I, I Nick Cannon. <laughs> do this, do, yeah, I was basically. And uh, play drums, still play the drums. And uh, yeah, so that's that's our kind of our three pillars. But we are adding things like um, STEM to our program now. Um, so we're getting Zwift involved with some of the things that we're doing um, in the inner city with uh, coding. Um, you know, it'd be cool one day if one of the kids that we're working with gets a job at Zwift, you know what I mean? And, and, and can attribute it to a, the, the program we had through the Bahati foundation was Zwift that taught us about coding, um, and gaming and stuff like that. So, uh, that's what we're focused on. We're continuing to raise money. If you, um, find, find yourself, uh, in a position to donate, just check out Bahati foundation.org. Uh, we have three different ways how you can donate if it's just a general fund or you can pick music or STEM or stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, just, uh, continuing it to, uh, try to motivate and, and get people involved and, and change lives. One, one, I guess one, one person at a time, because, uh, it's, we are a small organization and it's tough to touch so many people, but we just focus on what we can focus on. Oh yeah, man. Hey, speaking of music, <laughs> oh my god what is that the push-up bro push -ups. Yeah, a, how many we we still have five yeah we'll do five, five. Hey, Sync, hey Sync has 10 next week we go in five five increments nah. you want to do more we can I do more five one hand let's see it man <laughs> five one hand holy shit hey hey that's why that's why your headphones has got a cord and you got to take them out to do the push-ups <laughs> Hey, I'm not gonna lie. I'm real. I'm real huff after uh, doing those push-up challenges. I did it for like probably like a week and a half, bro. Look at this guy. Came He's still with... going. How many was that? Did he do ten, fifteen? I think he did ten. Why are you showing off, man? Hey, hey, why are you quick, showing off, bro? That was a quick ten, man. That's a quick ten. That was a quick ten. <laughs> Hey, hey, I started off, I got down, I was like, I'm going to do 10. I know we're all going to do 10. I'm about to do 10. And then I did three, and I was like, I'm going to do five. <laughs> you know what this is, Justin, is he's half-wheeling you again already. <laughs> yep. I got to get him somehow, man. Hey, hey, when I was a kid, I will never forget this. This, thing, this is still burnt in the back of my mind. I was a kid, and me and Rasan were riding together. And I wasn't riding close enough to this dude. You know this dude screamed at me like, hey, man, why are you not riding close to me? Why <laughs> <laughs> Why your hands not touching my hands? <laughs> I was like, bro. I was like, what are you? Like? And now look it's how like, you ride. I was <laughs> like, is this is this really your problem, bro? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, now when I ride next to you, I'm like, dude, you're too close, man. Like, I know. <laughs> It's funny to see people watch me and Corey ride too, because we'll be like bouncing, like literally, and don't lose a beat. Each other. Yep. Yeah, and, and people behind us are like. Yeah, what exactly. Are you, what are y'all doing? <laughs> are, is there anger in the in the home? <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Yeah, uh, what wanna, else? Um, I was gonna say, do you want to do the the shoot the shoot thing? Hell yeah! So we could <laughs> we could go straight from one thing into the next one. I don't. Yeah. Rasan ain't got no shoes on. He in his office, bro. He I got don't on, have he any got shoes. A, I got a. He looks like he. On. I was gonna say you look like you wear sandals. You look like you like. I don't wear sandals, dude. You, <laughs> you look like you like that thing between your two and your toe, bro. Nah, man, just some little Adidas slides, man. Nice. Oh, classic. That's a staple. That's a staple of the black community. You gotta have some slides. But if you go outside, you gotta put socks on with those slides. Hundred <laughs> percent. Can nobody see your <laughs> no feet? No never, toes, homie. We don't do not, that. Not <laughs> never. Not <laughs> never. Yo, let's do shoes. Um, All right, what you got? I have these. Oh, the oh, LeBron. Oh. 16s. 
But they're the oh. I they're the I Promise School edition. I don't know if you can see Yo. that. Um, Hold came, on, man. Y'all, y'all showing off. I'll be right back, man. Came yeah. with. <laughs> Yo, you got so, fire. Came with this little wristband. So my sister got me these for Christmas this year. Um, and you can't even get them new anymore, apparently. So she got these used. They were still super expensive, apparently, used. Yeah. But they're yeah, my all time yeah. favorites and they're so comfortable, dude. I love, love, love these shoes. And I wear this wristband that they came with every day. Every day. Yeah, so, just yeah, to, so. it's basically a promise to myself in terms of effort and stuff. And then also just reminds me of, uh, you know, the, the opportunities I have and, and maybe some of the hardships that the, the greater barriers that other people have and just to make mm-hmm. the most of it. So, anyway, That's those are some of my favorites. All right. These are like my favorite shoes ever. I have two pairs of these, right? Uh-oh. Uh they're the retro sixes, reflection yep. of a champion. Are those are that's like, like the hot, hot pink kinda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. it's like the 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 neon pink, the inferno pink. Mm-hmm. Um and these are reflective. So like mm-hmm. I don't know if you can see I can it. Tell. Like, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. So I got I have two pairs of these. These are my favorite, favorite Jordans ever, man. There's I got a set that are still in the box. Hell yeah. Oh. All right. I'm gonna just what get do we got? Oh, damn, he is like really popping a box open. <laughs> First of all, I know he already got these from his brother, bro. I ain't even worried. Yet. Nah, you know what's nice. funny though? This is the first pair of Jordans I ever purchased. I just no got way. them the other day. Yeah, Yo. I was I was always against buying expensive shoes. Uh, my first pair of Jordans I did get from my brother, the Red Toros, like this. I want them. Hey, let me have and, those. Uh, <laughs> uh, my wife got me some Jordans for christmas this year this past year and this is the very first pair i ever i ever purchased and you see the theme there you see the theme the this is just like my color scheme the bike yeah. this the, the the kit um so yeah that's sick that's sick those are dope i thought you'd like those when i seen them do you play basketball at all or uh i used to i used to but not really you know what i <laughs> what i notice is when i do things outside of cycling i get injured <laughs> I, I I get injured, so I just I just stay oh, away. Oh, so and, soft ass! <laughs> hey, my my kids started running uh, cross country, and it was a basketball court where they used to practice. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna start bringing a ball and just kill time. So one week I'm killing time, next week killing time, the third week you want to play a pickup game? Some people in the park, cool. All right, play a pickup game. Next week it's full five on five. The next day, I couldn't walk. I, I shattered my wrist a long time ago from bike racing. This was all jacked up, finger hurt, back hurt. I was like, oh, no, nah, man, I got to – I ain't doing that anymore. So, I, I stick to, to bike racing and push-ups. Yeah. Hey, hey he, was like, he was like, Jesus, if you get me through this. <laughs> For real. Um. I actually uh, – I, I started running a little bit. We got a treadmill in the house, and uh, – it's, it's gotten a little easier, but running kind of sucks too. You know I mean? Yeah. So I did a lot on the treadmill and then I finally went outside. Um, and I kept calling people, Hey, how was this? I did a, uh, I had to do a test. It was a mile and a half and I did it in like nine minutes, 45 seconds. And I didn't know if it was slow, fast, or it was like, man, you're fucking quick. Yeah. For no runner, I was like, dude, but it didn't feel good. You know? <laughs> he's, like, he's like, ain't he's like, ain't you like sixty, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Getting close, that's for sure. I'm working on it. Um, <laughs> all right, I got, a, I got, a, I got another question for you. Um, and this is obviously this is super important to me, just because uh, I'm kind of going down the wrong, the the not the wrong road, the same road now. Um, with with the team that you started, you started a professional team. I don't know if a lot of people know that, but you started this amazing professional team. Um, and I wanted to know uh, what are some of the things that you would do differently, and what are, what's some of the advice you could give me with uh, with what we're doing with the Legion and how we're moving forward. Hell yeah! Not hire Floyd Landis. <laughs> <laughs> Floyd, no, that Floyd, should be an easy one. Yeah, Floyd and I are cool, but the the reality is, <laughs> by the hiring of Floyd and his uh, admission to coming out with all the things that was happening with with him and Lance back in the day, ruined our program. You know, um, after he came out, you know, all the sponsors start pulling out, and basically, team went away. You know, so definitely would change that, um, and stay out. The advice I would give you is to stay true to 
what you envision your program to be like. And, and like I said the other day, I said your circle should fit in a minivan, if, if not a sedan. And, and I mean that, you know, just to say that I allow too many uh, chiefs to get in my circle. And at the time, you know, I was 29 years old. I had a vision, but I allowed other people to kind of skew that vision because, you know, I brought in these coaches and these other directors and they start bringing in their friends. Right. I was going to have a team of eight people. All of a sudden it was 22. Right. Yeah. I, I remember that. I was right? like, I remember and, going to the thing at LA live and being like, yo, this is a lot of people. Right. Man, like a full UCI. World Tour team. <laughs> you know, and it was supposed to I be was like, like, Hey, this. have these dudes not racing. <laughs> Supposed to be this humble group. Well, that's what happens where you allow people outside of your circle that you really don't know. You know, I mean, but it, that's that's natural, right? You you want to bring your friends along. If something cool is happening, you want to bring your friends along. And unfortunately, it wasn't a good thing for me. So uh, I I would definitely advise you to stay true to your your mission. You know, uh, if if you're not 100% sure about it, write it down, study it, believe in it, know that this is what you want to do, and. Uh, also, like, vet people out, man. Don't just let people come in. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, because the reality is you're hot right now, and everybody want to be around the hot person. I can tell right. you. I, I can name names of people right now that was, like, always at my house drinking. Remember my house in Carson? Mm -hmm. Money was good. Everything. Team's gone. No more fancy Cadillacs. All this stuff. And they're out of the picture. But yeah. the ones that were supposed to be there are still in my life right now. You know I mean? Yeah, so, I, feel, I feel that. Um, I, feel I learned that. a hard lesson there. Just kind of have to be a better judge of character, um, I would say, is another suggestion. Um, and take your time. Um, I think I, I told you one time, let's just use uh, Red Bull as an example. Say Red Bull come to you tomorrow and say, Justin, we want to give you a million dollars to your deal. That's great. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in um, let's do a million and a half over four years type thing. You know what I mean? Let's right. spread it out because the longer you can keep your foot in the door, the more impact you're going to have on people instead of like yeah. this two year hit. And then all of a sudden you're back at the drawing board trying to figure out where you're going to get, you know, half a million dollars from. So long yeah, that's my, that's my next step for sure. I think every deal that we sign, you know, this year was, it was turning out to be like a fantastic year, man. We started the season like 10 for 12 or something. Y'all a bunch of um, bullies, man. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't but impressing even, no one. Man. Running a monopoly. <laughs> yeah. Even, God damn, can I live, bro? <laughs> but even outside the wins, just like everything that we were trying to accomplish, like we had a couple of meetings with you guys and just like getting, uh, you know, being a part of um, – helping with the kids and getting into schools with Zwift and like having that conversation with like outright and trying to link everything together. So what, even with all of that, like, I think that my, what we're trying to do, like the goal, the, the sponsorships that we're trying to bring in moving forward, I'm looking like four or five years, man. Like I want like four years with like a fifth year option. Um, that's the only way, like we had a couple like two, three year deals uh, and they're great, but there's even two years is not long enough, man. You, I would be like two years. Okay, cool. I could do like this, this, and this, but to, to mutate and to transform and to uh, transcend like what we're doing right now, like I need like real partners. I need like people that are like, yes, we see the end goal. We see the long-term vision. Like we want to invest in that. Um, so like, that's where my head is, man, with like with everybody. Uh, it's like, if you want in, great. This is the time. Like, this is what we're looking like. This is what we're looking for for the year. And this is how much we're looking to grow, not only as, as you know, a team and as a brand, but this is how much money we need. To, this is how much we need the money to grow uh, year after year after year so that we don't feel like we signed a deal in the beginning. Uh, and like, by the time we get four years in, that deal is like, you know, stale or it, or it's not um, reflective of the work that we put in. So I, you know, and even from a, even from a, like, um, you're, you know, one of the things that you're trying to do is develop young riders. You can't do that in two years, yeah. right? It, it just, it, it takes longer. So um, if you could have someone who truly believes in the development of the youth for the future of the sport, they'll, they'll buy into it. You know what I mean? I'm working on a concept right now with, with Zwift about uh, doing something equivalent to like uh, Zwift Tri Academy, but for youth from the inner city and literally take a group of kids run up through the ringer get the seven to eight kids 
turn them into real bike racers so they're a real legit bona fide bike racing team they're getting paid they're going to school they're traveling and then in hopes that they can make it to the national team in hopes they can make it to the olympics when they come to la this oh, is yeah. a long-term drawn out thing but that's how much time it takes right yeah, to really man. develop an athlete that could compete at a high level like that unless you're just like a freak or something you know what i mean i think you have the like absolute right idea with that like that that'll be amazing and i think that you're literally one of the only people that i know that's qualified to even do that like you've developed me and like while my dad raced bikes like my dad was a cat three and he was really good and had an understanding of the race but when we got to the, that upper echelon of like what it was what I needed to do and how I needed to ride and even how I needed to act and carry myself. Like you were the one that kind of put me on game. So, you know, we, we have that going on right now with like, we have Isaiah, we have Dante, we have Ethan, uh, these, these amazingly brilliant uh, guys that have shown talent. So now it's that secondary stuff where it's like, bro, this is how you, this is how you show up to races. This is how you carry yourself. This is, and for now, for us, it's like also with media, like this is what you're, social media should look like because it's extremely it's extremely important right now like this is this could be the difference between you eating and you doing it for free mm -hmm. so like all of that stuff is like where we're heading now so i think that your your mind is in the right spot and like I, yeah again you're very uniquely qualified to to run that program you know for us like we'll get dante <clears throat> good by the time he like a master bro <laughs> we'll, get <him. laughs> we'll get him there bro it's been like five years we, we need like five more and right. he'd be all right dude right. dante is just like your punching bag at, at <laughs> any given time you're just like killing that guy <laughs> he's, he's come a long way though he's dude that's my way. that's my boy man dude that reason... guy is that guy is sharp when we rode together in, in santa monica earlier yeah. this winter and i was chatting with him for a while i was like shit this kid is this kid is smart he knows yeah. what he wants, man. And, like, that's why, you know, he's – I've known him for so long, right? He's, like, my little brother now. So, he gets it like nobody else gets it. Um, and, like, that's a part of it. Like, that's what I have with Rasan. And, like, that's kind of what me and him have. We talk about everything, talk about life, where he wants to be, what he wants yeah. to make out of this. And I, I tell him every day, I'm like, man, like, Legion is bigger than me or you. Like, this is an opportunity for you to have a chance to do this on a high level that you might not get if if we weren't around because it's so hard to, like – it's hard for anybody coming out of under 23 to kind of find out what direction they want to go in and what that, you know, what teams they need to go to. And like that development process from, from junior to like pro is crazy. Yeah. It's like one of the yeah. things I wanted to talk to Robert about. Um, but like, you know, thankfully we have this program and I tell Dante all the time, like, look, man, like, you know, as far as you can get in this sport, we'll help you get there. Right. This is, this is a program that's basically built for you to like, live your dream out and and after it's done hopefully we te we also teach you the skills so that you can like come back to the brand come back to what legion grows into and have a job there right so it's like this multi you know we're trying to do multiple things as far as like what mm -hmm. we're doing with this development and and beyond right because you know dante most like me and dante we, i went to college for a year dante didn't go to college it's like one of those things where like what's the end goal right after cycling is done what what is dante going to do right and, and hopefully uh we he's amazing at social media it could be something where you know the legion grows into you know a, a full bone pro team and he's the person that handles like the social media um and we can give him a job in doing that so like mm -hmm. like i said dante dante gets it a lot but it's it's all love and at the end of the day i just want what's what's best for him um, and I got, I got to keep him humble, man. Have you, have you hung out with that dude, man? I swear to God, he'd be walking around like, Hey man, Hey Dante, have you heard of me? It's Dante Young. Have you, have you heard of me? <laughs> so you saw me on the ground. You saw me on the ground, on the gram. Dude, before so, you know it, he's going to be signing autographs for you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, full circle. <laughs> y'all about the y'all about the same size now, so that 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 could potentially happen. Uh, uh don't don't disrespect me. We're not the same size. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We uh we're over an hour, so we should start start tying this up. We've taken enough of your time, but we have a couple more rapid fire questions. Since this is a quarantine companion podcast, we're trying to let all the people feel in this together create some unity even though we're all we're all stuck apart right now so got a few uh few fun rapid fire questions uh first one what are five things that you have to have when you're in quarantine mm. uh 
You don't have to think about it too hard. Some quiet, quiet time. Uh, He's like, you got kids. This is done. <laughs> Get me out of here. Some sunshine. <laughs> some coffee. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Some beer. Dang. Uh, what kind of what kind of beer you drink? Ah, uh, man, I'm kind of like a beer snob, man. Really? Uh, yeah. Right. I like I, it. I um, I got my my hands on some uh, some hop slam. You ever heard of hop slam? No. Look it up. Right. Super delicious. <laughs> kind of hard to find. I'll tell you this. It's a can. Comes in a can. Six pack. Bevmo. Twenty six bucks. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but my my other go to right now is a uh, pizza port uh, IPA from Swami's. I mean Swami's Pizza Port from uh, can't even talk. <laughs> Swami's IPA from Pizza Port right. uh, is my go to. It's kind of a tall can. Um, but yeah, man, I'm I'm you know I buy like I get stuff imported from from other uh what's up <laughs> from other places that we can't we can't get beer here uh like some zombie dust and stuff like that uh damn deep cuts. i know the name of that beer and i don't even drink beer he liked that beer so every time i yeah. come to this like, hey man you want some zombie dust i said yeah. first of all when i go to the midwest <laughs> that sounds I, terrible. I, I, I smuggle i smuggle it back in uh yeah so outside of that man um this is you you might think this is funny but on youtube I watch uh, airplane simulators. <laughs> what? Yeah, I, I watch people fly simulators on YouTube. Dude, that's like a weird. That's like a. That's like a fetish almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Yo, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, what kind of weird? <laughs> yeah, there, it's really only two things I watch on YouTube, and it's it's that or I watch this channel called uh, Active Self Protection. It's about like. Uh, handling firearms and, and hmm. situations. Uh, he basically takes all these situations. Most of them come from Central and South America where they're jacked up, right? Yeah. You know, robbery, arm robbery. And it shows you, it teaches you lessons. They, they either turn out good or turn out bad. Most of them turn out bad. But he's teaching you lessons of perhaps what you did right and what you could have done to get out of the situation. So huh. I watch stuff oh, like that. That sounds dope. Yeah. That sounds dope, actually. All right. That's it. I don't, I don't need nothing else. All right. One thing quarantine has given you, one thing quarantine's taken away. Uh, it's definitely given me more patience, uh, Ben, you know, with the, with the full household. Um, taken away is just, I think, the freedom. The freedom is, is, is huge. Uh, you, you guys both race bikes. You probably had some really nasty accidents, and I think you realize, like, how important health is, right? like when you're all jacked up can't do anything um i kind of feel like that right now it's just like you want to go out and just kind of live and and do what you want to do on a daily um i've only been on my bike one time in six weeks outside <sighs> yeah and it was it was last thursday i literally was sitting at my desk right here and i was like i gotta get out you know and i'm totally against riding outside right now for many reasons um and I just went out and I felt guilty the whole time. We rolled two and a half hours, felt great, but felt guilty. And then next thing you know, back on Zwift. Yeah. Um, until I feel it's it's safe to go out and, and live freely. And God forbid I get in an accident. If I got to go to the hospital, I'm okay. You know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, those, those two things, uh, patience and freedom. <clears throat> cool, man. You got anything else, Justin? No, man, I thought that was fantastic. That was my favorite episode so far, and we ain't, haven't even edited it. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Um, well, thanks, Rasan. That was awesome. Really yeah, appreciate course, you man. taking the time. Uh, means a lot. And uh, sweet to get you two together. I've heard a lot about this relationship, and it's sweet to kind of see y'all play off of each other a little bit. Yeah, you, you, you just scratched the surface, man. This I'm sure. Like, this could be like a 10-part series, man. For we could do that. No one's for going anywhere. Time. We could do yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. For real, dude. Uh, but I just want to say thank you to uh, the folks that are making making this show possible right now, making sure Justin gets paid. Zwift. Hey, spot. Life by spot. Zwift. <laughs> both. both. Um, shout out Zwift, actually. for they're, they're technically our presenting partner. They're the, they're the ones that are really backing us here. And uh, even though we're all inside, like you mentioned earlier, Rasan, they're opening doors thanks to some of the work you're doing. Um, if none of y'all have, have tried Zwift yet, 
I'd highly recommend it. It's not riding inside really. Like it's a totally different experience. There's all kinds of cool, they've got something for everybody. Yep. You know, I did Peter Stetna's Gravelures group ride the other day and it was awesome. My coach just randomly showed up and my teammate who lives in Girona nice. and we just rode together and yep. chatted, talked shit. Stetna was telling me about how he's coming after me next race in front of like 120 people. Hey. It was awesome. Tell, 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 tell Stetna to take a nap. <laughs> if he's not careful he's gonna turn into a pro zwift racer so then i really won't have to worry about him but uh seriously that's a whole other animal <laughs> yeah and then yeah like justin was saying thanks for thanks to spot life by spot um awesome awesome company if you sign up it's only 25 bucks a month you get twenty thousand dollars of accident insurance coverage uh per injury so God forbid that you break your right arm and you have some expenses and then you break your left arm, it starts over. So you have another 20,000 to work with. So it's a super good deal. Um, if you go to life by spot and input the code Payson, they'll donate the proceeds. I think it's the first month of proceeds to world bicycle relief, which right now is going directly to uh, folks helping out with COVID-19. So awesome. shout out to them. Hey, one thing about Zwift too, for those who don't have a smart trainer, you can get into Zwift with a dumb trainer or a classic trainer. You know, the trainer you've had trainer. for the last the last 10 years, all you need is a speed sensor. And you can download the Zwift app in any of the, uh, any of the uh, stores and literally get into the game and move the avatar and you get seven days free. So try it out. Uh, yeah, you can do it with a dumb trainer and a speed sensor. That's honestly a good point. I, I was watching a video the other day and someone had rollers and a phone and yep. they were Zwifting. Yep. And it's just crazy to me how, uh, how diverse um, and like broad the, the technology applies now. Like you, you don't have to spend the thousands of dollars on a nope. crazy trainer and like a TV and Apple TV and all these yep. things. Yeah. A lot of people use, um, use rollers and as long as your speed sensor broadcasts and plus Bluetooth, you're good to go. Seriously, you don't need a lot of like, Zwift is not heavy on, like you don't need a lot of internet to do it. You could literally run it off of a hotspot or just your regular like 4G, you know what I mean? Like if you have unlimited, unlimited data, you're good to go. Oh yeah. Cool, man. Um, stay healthy, y'all. Any last yeah, words, Justin? That's it, man. Thanks for having us. Having us. This, uh, this is a good one. Yeah. See you next Friday. Uh, Rasan, this should, uh, not should, it will go out on Tuesday. And uh, I'll let you know. All right, right on. Nope. Adios. All right, you guys have a good one. Yeah, you too. Peace. Later, guys. Bye.